All right, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Emma. Thank you so much for being here and for choosing to practice with me. We're gonna get started on our backs today in either Supta Baddha Konasana, bottoms of the feet touching knees wide. If that doesn't feel great for any reason, you can go feet flat, knees falling in towards each other. Bring your left hand to your heart, right hand to your belly. Settle into your space. And then empty your lungs completely. Let all of that old, stale, stagnant air be released so that your next breath can be a little bit deeper. And again, big exhale. Let's take two more deep, full breaths all the way in. And all the way out. Last one, full breath. Let it go. And then seal your lips. Just make your breath nice and even through your nose if possible, like a cycle. Never in a rush to get to the top. Never in a rush to get to the bottom. Just enjoying every little part of the breath. Actually the opposite of rushing, the opposite of quick breathing. We want nice slow cycles of breath. Close your knees like a book if they're not already. Take a big full body stretch, reach your arms overhead, arch your back, point your toes. Hug your knees into your chest and then circle your knees in one direction. Just massaging around your low back, your tailbone. And circle your knees in the other direction. And circle your knees away from each other. and towards each other. Knees together, arms out wide, T-shape or cactus arm shape. Drop your knees left and look right. Now you can choose if you wanna make this kind of passive, just melt into the shape or a little bit more active, flexing your feet, zipping up your legs. There is no right or wrong options. There's always options though throughout class to do a little more or do a little less. And we so often think that doing more is better or more advanced, but that's not always the case. And what does advanced really mean anyways? Draw your knees back through center, take your knees over to the right, look left. Just because a pose looks cooler or feels more challenging does not make it better than another pose or a different variation. I like to say the most advanced pose you can do is the one where you're breathing intentionally. So wherever that is for you today, make that a priority. Draw your knees back through center, grab the backs of your legs, and then just start to rock up and down your spine two, three, four times. After your last one, cross over your ankles and let's meet in a tabletop position. Once you get there, turn your fingers to point back towards your knees and then just either circle out the shoulders over the wrists or shift your weight around in any capacity. No need to rush, just breathe into these spaces, don't force. And then you choose, you can keep your hands like this if it feels good, or turn your hands the regular direction, fingers forward for cat cow. As you inhale, arch your back, look up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, round your spine, scoop your tailbone, gaze towards your navel. Again, inhale, look up. Exhale, round. 
and then keep going. Feel free to adjust your hands. If you like to tuck your toes so you can also get a stretch on the bottoms of your feet, that feels nice. Keep going, like three more breaths. Last two. Start to make your breath more audible by constricting the back of your throat. Ujjayi breath. One more. We'll meet with a neutral spine. Hover your right knee off of the mat and then just take some big hip circles with your right leg. Try not to dump only into the left hand. Keep even pressure in your palms and then switch directions with your circles. Take your right leg out to the right off the mat so the toes point forward. Sink your hips back towards your left heel and then bring your shoulders over your wrists. We'll do two more. Sink hips to left heel, shoulders forward, sink back, come forward, stack your shoulders over your wrists, keep your right leg out to the right. Reach your left arm directly out to the left and roll out your left wrist. Tone your belly. Thread your left arm underneath, thread the needle pose. Mm -hmm. Left side of the face to the mat or a block. Walk your right hand forward or half wrap. Push the top of your left foot, left shin bone down, firm down the outer edge of your right foot. If you are like me and have kind of short legs, it's not easy, but you might be able to grab your outer left foot or, or outer right foot or ankle with your left hand. Again, don't force the poses. Just kind of find your edge and soften there. Last two. And one. Slide your right hand back beside your face. Unwind your left arm, hands to the mat. Then lift your right leg up. Swing your right leg all the way off the mat to the left. Look over your left shoulder. Try to spot your uh, right heel. Push into your palms. Then lift your right leg up, bend your knee, stack your heel over your knee. Cactus bend your left arm, squeeze your back muscles, and maybe reach back for an inside grip on your right foot. So when the right foot is kicking over to the left, it's easier to grab your foot, but once you have it, I want you to kick a little bit to the right and try to plug your right shoulder back. So you want to bump your left hip a little bit to the right, breathe, and then slowly release. Tabletop, round your back for a moment, cat pose and neutral spine. Hover your left knee off the mat and take some big hip circles with that left leg. Again, even weight in your hands. Go the other direction. Take your left leg out to the left so the toes point forward. Sink your butt back towards your right heel. Bring your shoulders over your wrists. Again, sink back forward. One more time. Stack your shoulders over your wrists. Keep your left leg out to the left. Stretch your right arm directly out to the right. Roll out your right wrist. Tone your low belly. Thread your right arm through. Thread the needle pose. Once you're down, left hand forward or half wrap. Keep pressing down through the outside edge of your left foot and the top of your right foot. Again, option for this right hand to grab your left foot or ankle if it's accessible. If not, don't force it. Breathing into your upper back, behind your right shoulder, last two. And one. Left hand besides your face, unwind both hands to the mat. 
Lift your left leg, swing it all the way around, off the mat to the right. Look over your right shoulder, try to spot your heel. Breathe. Then lift your toes, bend your left knee. Stamp your heel towards the ceiling. Cactus bend your right arm. It's easier to reach back when your foot is kicking over to the right. So you can do that as a little cheat. But once you have it, kick to the left. Plug your left shoulder back. Pull your sternum forward. I like to push down with the right toenails to feel more stable. Last two. One, slowly release, tabletop, round your back, cat pose. And then let's take it right back to downward facing dog. Pedal out your legs or drop your heels side to side, any sort of movement that feels good. If this is too intense on your wrists, grab the outer edges of your mat or use blocks underneath your hands. Focus more on the sides of the body and the spine getting long, then straightening out your legs. You're always welcome to keep a little bend in your knees. Let's lift the heels up and walk up towards the front of the mat, grabbing a forward fold when you get there. Step your feet out pretty wide, at least the width of your mat. Bend your knees quite a bit. Let your rib cage rest on your thighs and your arms hang heavy. Feel free to grab your elbows or clasp your hands behind your head if that feels nice. Really focus on getting this rib cage to thigh connection instead of just straightening into your legs and rounding your back. Even if it feels more of a squat than a fold, Gradually, as you feel more space, you might be able to push the thigh bones back slightly, lifting your hips, your tailbone. Shake your head no and yes. And then release your arms. Switch it out opposite forearm or opposite thumb on top. Add a gentle sway side to side if you haven't already. Notice if your breath feels stuck in your throat or your chest, try to pull your breath all the way up, bottom of the belly. Push all that old air out. Release your arms, lift up halfway. So when you feel your sternum pull forward, but try not to arch your back like cow pose. So think ribs up and in, low belly squeeze. Exhale, fold, option to grab your ankles. Again, half lift, sternum forward, shoulders back, but the ribs pulling up and in. Exhale, forward fold. One more time, lift up halfway. Forward fold. Plant your hands, step back with your right foot, then your left foot to plank pose. Spread your shoulder blades, scoop your hip points forward, firm your upper thighs. Shift your weight forward and drop your knees. Keep your toes tucked and your butt lifted as you lower your chest and chin towards the mat. Think about your arms like grasshopper arms. Pull yourself through to cobra pose. Make sure your heels aren't flopping out. The toes point directly back. Pin your shoulder heads back. Then tuck your toes. Use your low abdomen to lift your hips up, downward facing dog. Feel free to adjust your hands and your feet. Never feel stuck where you land. You're always welcome to move and adjust. Let your head be really heavy. Completely relax your neck. Gaze is either at your feet, your thighs, or your belly button. Breathe evenly. Lift your heels, look forward. Step with your right foot, then your left foot to the front. Your feet can be touching or hip width. Lift up halfway, forward fold. Inhale, rise, reach up, palms touch up top. 
Take your right hand down your right leg and side bend over to the right. Squeeze your legs and your right oblique. Firm your glutes. And then can you get nice and light in your toes so you're not gripping so much. Inhale, reach up, palms touch. Exhale, side bend to the left. See how far you can reach your left fingertips down. Extend through your right pinky finger. Inhale, back up, reach up. Exhale, cactus bend your arms, open your chest, look up. Inhale, reach up, pull your rib cage in. Exhale, forward fold, empty your lungs. Lift up halfway. Put your hands down, step back with your left foot, then your right foot. Shift forward, You're, you can definitely drop your knees again or regular chaturanga, lower halfway as you gaze forward. Push your feet back, then pull yourself through to upward facing dog, thighs floating. Roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Chaturanga with the knees up or down is great. There's no better or worse option. It's just what works for you. It might be different day to day. You're always welcome to skip the vinyasas and just, you know, do a push up or go back to down dog. Honor where your body is today. Just because you can do something does not mean you have to. Lift your heels, look forward. Step with your left foot, then your right foot to the front. Halfway lift, fold in. Rise, reach, palms touch up top. One breath, side bend to the right. Reach your fingers down towards your knee. Inhale, center, palms touch, waistline in. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, cactus bend, curl back. Light toes. Inhale, reach up, ribs in. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Hands down, step back or jump back. If you're stepping back, we're gonna alternate which foot goes first. Shift forward and lower, chaturanga, knees up or down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Spread your fingers, grip a little with your finger pads. Between the thumb and pointer finger, push down. Wrap your outer armpits around like you're hiding your armpits. Imagine the arms and the sides of your body getting longer, like someone's lifting your outer hips up. Lift your heels, look forward, step or jump to the front, halfway lift, forward fold. We'll go one more time, rise all the way up, Side bend to your right. Push all the air out. Inhale, center. Side bend to the left. Inhale, center. Cactus bend your arms. Lean back. Reach up. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Step or jump back all the way to the bottom of your breath, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, up dog to the top of your breath. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Squeeze your legs, especially your upper thighs. Tone your low belly. Imagine pulling your ribs in. Breathe into your sides, up and down the length of your spine. One more breath here. Lift your heels, look forward, step or jump to the front, halfway lift, 
forward fold. Bend your knees, chair pose. Sit back into your heels. Light toes. Again, wrap your outer armpits around so the pinky spiral in a little bit. Notice if you're flaring your ribs out, try to tuck the bottom ribs in. Take an inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Just your left foot step back, drop your knee. Untuck back toes, reach arms up. Grab your left wrist or opposite elbows and lean over to your right. Plug your right femur bone back into the hip socket. Inhale, center, half splits. Frame your right leg, flex your toes. Again, plug your right femur bone back so you almost feel the right side belly lifting. Rebend your right knee, spin your left shin behind you. Walk your hands 45 degrees to the left over the top left corner of your mat. You should feel a nice stretch, inner right hip, inner right thigh. Walk until your left hand finds the back of your mat. Spin your right toes in, extend your right arm up and over, maybe even right hand behind your skull. Turn it into a back bend for three. Open your chest to the ceiling, two. One, look down, put your right hand down, roll onto your right toes, step your left foot up towards your left thumb and drop your back knee. Low lunge, Anjaneyasana B, reach up. Grab your right wrist or your elbows again and lean over to your left. Plug your left femur bone back and push your right shin bone down. Inhale, center. Exhale, half splits. Frame your left leg, little twist to the left. Try not to round your back here. Feel your sternum pull forward, shoulders back, sides of the body nice and long. Rebend your left knee, spin your right shin behind you. Walk your hands 45 degrees to the right. Push into your palms, lengthen your sides. Think like down dog with your arms. And then walk until your right hand finds the front of your mat. Spin your left toes in, stretch your left arm overhead. Stay there or left hand behind your skull. Open your chest, firm down the outside edge of your left foot. Breathe. and release. Left hand down, step back to plank pose. Shift forward, lower halfway and hold. Three, firm your thighs, tone your belly, two. One, press back up plank, back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in, out. Reseal your lips, breathe evenly through your nose. Lift your right leg up behind you. Step up to your right thumb. Bump left foot a little to the left, come up to a crescent warrior, crescent lunge. Right knee over ankle, deep breath in. Exhale, take a twist to your right. Reach your right arm back, left arm forward. Sink your right hip crease. Take right hand back of the left thigh, reach left arm up. Keep a little of your twist to the right. Deep breath in. As you exhale, put your fingertips on the mat a little bit in front of your right foot. Finish your exhale. 
and then find a standing split. Swing your left leg up nice and high. Fold over your right leg. Step your left foot to meet your right foot. Feet can be together or hip width. Bend your knees, Utkatasana or chair pose. Reach up. As you exhale, long exhale, forward fold. Keep using the exhale to step your right foot back. Spin your right heel flat. And on your inhale, rise, warrior one. Warrior one on the left side. Think about the rib cage pulling together. Take a breath in, look up. Exhale, hinge and sweep your arms back. Firm your triceps. On your next inhale, pivot to the right, star pose. And exhale to the back, warrior two. Feel your hip points lift, right knee a little bit to the right. Flip your right palm, reverse warrior. Try not to dump into the left side body, so feel the lift up, inhale. Exhale, windmill your hands to the back of your mat. Step your right foot back. Shift forward and lower chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up behind you. Try to keep your hips square, so don't just flail it up. Step your left foot to your left thumb. Bump your right foot a little to the right and come up high lunge, crescent warrior. Take an inhale. Exhale, twist to your left. Put your left hand on the back of your right thigh. Reach your right arm up. Keep a bit of this twist over to the left. Inhale, exhale, windmill fingertips to the mat. Swing your right leg up nice and high, standing splits. Fold over your left leg. Step your right foot to meet your left foot, forward fold. Bend your knees, Utkatasana, reach up. You can always separate your feet for chair pose. Forward fold, long exhale, you will also step your left foot back and rise, warrior one. Inhale. Hinge and sweep your arms back, feel your right side belly lift. Star pose, pivot your feet, draw your waistline in, press your palms together up top. To the front, warrior two. Tone your belly, flip your left palm, reverse warrior, reach more up than back. Exhale, hands to the mat, step your left foot on back, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, we'll meet, downward facing dog. Steady your breath, inhale. And exhale. All right, let's do that again. Moving with our breath, slowing down the breath. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, step. Inhale, crescent warrior, reach up. Exhale, twist right. Just the left arm, reach up. Inhale. Exhale, fingertips to the mat. Standing splits, inhale. Exhale, feet together, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold. Right foot step back. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hinge and sweep. Inhale, star pose, palms touch. Right toes out, warrior two. Inhale, reverse, keep your legs. 
Exhale, vinyasa at the back of your mat. To downward facing dog. Left leg, inhale. Exhale, step. Crescent lunge. Twist left. Just the right arm up. Fingertips to the mat. Standing splits. Forward fold. Utkatasana. Fold. Left foot back. Warrior one, inhale. Both arms back, exhale. Star pose, palms touch. Warrior two, front. Reverse. Hands to the mat. Vinyasa. Step it on back. Inhale up. Exhale back. Down dog. We'll go one more time with our breath. Right leg. Soft step. Crescent lunge. Twist right. Left arm up, fingertips to the mat, standing splits, forward fold, utkatasana, fold and right foot step back, warrior one, both arms back, star pose. Warrior two, front. Breath in, reverse. Breath out, vinyasa, take it down. Last time, left side, inhale. Exhale, step. Crescent lunge. Twist left. Right arm up, fingertips, standing splits, forward fold, utkatasana, fold and left foot step back, warrior one, arms back. Star pose, warrior two to the front. Reverse warrior, chaturanga, take it down. Inhale upwards, exhale downward dog. Few breaths. Catch your breath if you need. Child's pose. Pedal your legs. If you're drinking water mid-practice, just try to make them small sips so you aren't gulping down air. If you drink a lot of water, you can feel things kind of sloshing around. Doesn't feel so nice. So if you're drinking really cold water, it's kind of putting out that fire we've been working to create with our ujjayi breath. We'll meet in down dog with the feet out nice and wide. So wide feet, toes stay pointing forward. Walk hands back just a few inches with the thumbs touching. Right hand, reach outer left ankle. Hips bump right, pull torso through left. If left hand, doesn't feel good there, walk it back or put it on a block. Thumbs touch, walk hands forward a bit, thumbs touching still. Right foot, outside right pinky finger, lizard pose. Hug right knee in towards right shoulder. Option to drop down to forearms. Keep back knee lifted, firming up the left thigh. 
So you're thinking right hip crease pulling back, left hip almost pushing forward. Like the inner thighs are trying to drag towards each other. Try not to let, let that right knee fall outwards. Keep hugging it in towards you for three. Two. One, prop up onto your hands. Could be helpful to take your left hand a little to the left. Place your right hand on your right thigh. You're gonna drive left knee towards chest. Kick your left leg all the way through and take a seat. So left leg is straight forward. Right foot stays on the mat. You might need more space between right foot and left thigh if your hips are tight. Stretch your arms up and fold over your left leg. Now, if this is too intense, you can always take Janu Shirshasana instead. Bottom right foot, inner left thigh. If you'd like to add on, right arm reach out to the right. Make sure you turn your thumb down so your right shoulder is internally rotating. Take a half wrap or maybe left arm reach around and make a bind. You can always use a towel, a strap, if you're able, you're grabbing left wrist, folding over left leg with the left foot flexed, hugging right knee in towards right shoulder, toning your belly, feeling your belly button pull back. Three. Two. One. Lift your torso up, release your bind. Let's extend this right leg straight. Left hand, grab the outside edge of your right foot, reach your right arm back. So something we often do standing. Sit up nice and tall, low back push in. Come back through center, keep your right arm lifted. Bend your right knee and put your right foot back to where it was. We'll take this left arm now and put your hand behind you. Left fingers pointing towards the back of the mat. Right arm is still reaching up. Push into your right foot, roll to the outside edge of your left foot. Wild thing. It's gonna help to look down at your left hand and make it feel more like wild thing. Many times we get in from like a three leg down dog. So just a little bit of a different entrance. Look down towards your left thumb and then slowly start to flip yourself around. Step your right foot through. You might need to adjust your feet so you're a little bit more on your mat. In a runner's lunge, right foot forward facing the back of your mat. Once you get there, drop your back knee and reach up. Take a prayer twist to the right. If a prayer twist doesn't work out, go wide arms like we've been doing throughout class. Push your right palm down into your left palm. Try to get your sternum towards your thumbs. Then you're almost leaning your skull back to the left. Stay there or tuck your left toes, pop your left knee off of the mat. Keep pushing right palm into left palm, right knee to the right. Stay there or open up your arms. Never feel like you have to move on. Again, I always try to give options. Nothing's better or worse than something else. Just go where you can breathe, where you can hold. Right hand down, pyramid pose. Shorter stance. Left toes angled out. Plug your right hip back. I like the hands walking forward. You might also like the hands walking back opposite. Revolving triangle. Left hand matter block, right hand waist. Push right hip crease back, turn chest to the right. Then reach right arm up. Left hand pushing down to assist with the twist. Try not to just dump forward. So left hand pushing down, chest turning to the right. That's all good. Look up, right thumb, three, two, 
one, look down, bump your left hand forward. A block is really helpful here. Lift your left leg up behind you, revolving half moon. Right thigh bone pushing back. And then like we did kneeling, if you'd like, you can bend your left knee. It helps to bring your foot over to the right to grab the foot with the right hand. But once you have it, you're really trying to kick back into the left. So the right thigh bone continues to push back. The sides of the body are long. This is revolving full moon for three, two, one. Release grip. Step your left foot behind your right foot. Your pinky toes touch. Walk hands over to the right. Drop your head. Feel free to put your hands on a block. Walk your hands through center, pivot on your feet, keep walking hands to the left until you can spin around and face the front of the mat. Your feet are no longer crossed and they're hip width. Bend your knees if you need, get your rib cage on your thighs. Parangushtasana, grab your big toes with your peace sign fingers. Lengthen, inhale, fold, exhale. Belly to thighs, keep it there. Maybe the thigh bones start to push back. Shrug shoulder blades away from ears. Roll a little weight forward without gripping into your toes. Squeeze your quadriceps. Three. Head heavy, two. One, release, grip, half lift, forward fold. Inhale, rise, reach up. Pull your right knee into your chest without hiking your right hip up in the air. Flex your right foot, tone your belly. Take a breath in. Exhale, twist over to the right. So we've done lots of twisting to the right now. If you would like, your left hand can reach for the outer edge of your right foot like we did seated, like we did in revolve, triangle. Right hip going down, last step is to look back towards your right thumb for three, two, one. Unwind your torso, reach your arms up, straighten your right leg and either hold or pulse for five, four, three, two, one, standing splits, dive your hands to the ground. Keep your right leg lifted as you walk your hands out to a three leg downward dog. Crunch your right knee to your left elbow. Kick your leg through. Try to line your toes up with your fingertips. Spin your left foot flat and reach your left arm up. Or, uh, fall in triangle. So the left arm up is great. If you have more space, extend your top arm. Plug your right shoulder back. Three. Reach through left pinky finger, two. And one, left hand down, pigeon pose. Slide your right knee behind your right wrist. If pigeon doesn't feel good for any reason, take a seated figure four. Otherwise, make your way down. Forearms block, palms. Feel free to stay here or add a little twist, threading your left arm underneath like thread the needle pose, since we've done so much twisting to the right already. Feel free to stay where you are or come up onto your hands, bend your left knee. Reach back, grab left foot, pull heel in towards you. If that's going well and you'd like to add on, you wanna get your left foot to your inner left elbow crease so your left hand is free. Reach your right arm up and then reach right hand for a left hand mermaid pose. The entire time you're trying to think torso squaring towards the front, not opening to the left. From here, King Pigeon Pose, I like to reach right hand for the left big toe and then kind of unthread my left arm so that now I can fully square myself towards the front of the mat, 
You can always use a strap around your foot as well or a block and or a block underneath your right hip. Don't force the pose, it's a pretty deep back bend. I like to release the right hand first. I don't know, just my personal preference. And then release the left hand. Step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upwards and exhale, downward facing dog. Once you get to down dog, separate your feet nice and wide. Walk thumbs back. Walk hands back with the thumbs touching. Left hand, outer right ankle. Squeeze legs, light toes if possible. Hips a little left. Pull torso through to the right. Right palm, push forward and down like the right side of your body is getting longer. Thumbs touch, walk hands forward a bit. Left foot outside, left pinky finger, lizard pose. Stay on your hands or drop down forearms. Whatever you're doing, just try to get that left knee hugging in. Don't let it flop out. Firm up your right thigh. So right thigh pushing up, left hip sinking. Trying to level out your hips and think about your legs kind of like magnets. Just leveling, pulling towards each other for three. Two. One, prop back up onto your hands. Might help to put your right hand a little out to the right. Left hand on the left thigh. Drive your right knee up towards your left and then kick your right leg through, take a seat. If your hips are pretty tight, you might need more space between your left foot and right thigh or always an option to take it to Janu instead. Reach your arms up, dive a little to the right as you fold. Stay here or left arm out to the left, thumb down. Kind of think like you're doing a breath stroke. So reaching forward, swimming through, maybe reaching back for a bind. And then you're kind of dropping your right shoulder. You're folding over your right leg. Hug your left knee in, flex your right toes, squeeze your belly. Lots of components to the pose, more than what it looks like. So you could see someone doing it and not really know if they're fully engaging, but you can feel. Lift your torso back up, release your bind if you've got it. Your right hand grabs the outside of your left foot, left arm reach back, straighten into your left leg, push your low back in, and then look back towards your left thumb. Flex both feet. Look towards the front of your mat. Bend your left knee. Put your left foot down. Reach both arms up. Right hand behind you. Fingers point towards the back of your mat. Push down into your left foot. Spin your right toes to the right. Wild thing. Look down at your right hand. Adjust your body if you need to. Push your spine in behind your heart. Look down to help yourself flip it around and step your left foot forward. You might need to readjust unless you have one of those really big yoga mats. Drop your back knee, we'll meet in a low lunge. Left foot forward facing the back of your mat. Inhale, reach. Exhale, prayer twist to the left. Left palm push down into right palm. Lean a little to the right, so that's just making more resistance. Kind of wringing out your spine here. Tuck your back toes if you did on the other side. Open your arms if you did on the other side. Left knee a little left, plug left hip back, firming up your right thigh. Wherever you are, make your breath a priority. So in these deep twists, it can be hard. Just breathe as deep as you can. Try to still take slow breaths, even if you can't breathe into the base of your belly. Release, pyramid pose. Shorter stance. Folding over left leg, plugging left hip back. Squeezing your middle, squeezing your inner thighs towards each other. If you'd like, you can always walk your hands back as well. Revolving triangle. Keep your low body, right hand, mat or block, left hand waist. Push left hip back, start to turn your chest, then reach your left arm up. Don't compromise the pose just to get the arm up. 
Start from the base, all the poses start with the feet. So it's better to take some time and set it up correctly. There's no rush to get into a pose. If that's all going well, try to look up at your left thumb. Look down, bump your right hand forward, lift right leg up behind you, revolving half moon. Keep the length in your sides. Stay there or bend your right knee. Helps to kick the right foot over to the left if you want to grab your foot. But once you've got it, again, you're kicking back into the right. So the left thigh bone can continue to push back. Sides of the body are long. Revolving full moon pose. And release, step right foot behind left foot, pinky toes touch, walk hands left with or without a block. Walk hands center, keep going to the right, pivot on your feet until you can face the front of your mat. Your feet are no longer crossed. Slide your hands under your feet, Pada Hastasana, toes towards your wrist crease. Lengthen, inhale, sternum forward. If you need to bend your knees, you can forward fold. Think about rolling some weight towards your toes, towards your wrists, and then imagine your hands trying to slide out from underneath you. The more you squeeze your thighs, tone your belly, the more fold you'll get. One more breath. and release. Halfway lift, forward fold. Inhale, rise, reach up. Pull left knee to chest without hiking your left hip up in the air. Flex your foot, stand up tall. Right hand, left knee, or if you wanna give it a shot, grab the outside edge of your foot. Keep the left hip going down so the side body is long. Last step is to look back towards left thumb. Keep moving your breath. Unwind, reach up, embrace the wobbles. Stay or pulse five, four, three, two, one. Dive, fold it all the way, standing splits. Left leg stays up, walk hands forward. Crunch, almost there, left knee, right elbow. Kick it through, fall in triangle pose. Back foot flat. Inner right thigh working, right arm reach up, or extend. Palm down if you're extending, so you can reach through your pinky finger. Right hand down, slide it through, pigeon pose. Every time I practice at home, I just end up getting so distracted, wanting to clean things. So now even here, I'm noticing like there's still a sticker on the bottom of this potter I've had for, oh gosh, three years. So there will always be distractions, like when you notice your mind starting to wander off of the boundaries of your mat. See if you can bring yourself back, notice your breath. What can you feel in your body? If you took a twist on the other side, take a twist here. It's the right arm underneath. And then if you went for the back foot on the other side, start to make your way back up. Bend your right knee, reach back, right hand, grab. Just start to pull in. If you get signs like pain, um, I would back away. Just don't push it any further. Bottom of the, or top of the right foot kind of nestles into your inner right elbow crease. Then the left arm can reach up. Start by reaching for the fingertips, mermaid pose. And then if that's going well, just keep leaning back until those left fingers can kind of grab your right toe. This is how I like to get in. I like to unthread the right arm. Right hand grabs the outer edge of the right foot. Then your 
lifting through your sternum, leaning your head back, back, back. And slowly releasing, step back, vinyasa. All right, lift your heels, look forward, step or jump through, seated, feet flat, lie down onto your back and hug your knees in. Plant your feet flat on the mat, arms by your side, scoop your tailbone, lift your hips up, bridge pose for five. Feet driving down and forward, knees forward, chest back, four. Three, light toes, heaviest heels, two, one, lower hips down, take a breath. Number two, lift hips up, option to make a bind. Imagine squeezing a balloon between your knees, keep scooping the tailbone towards the back of the knees. Release, bind, lower down. Take a breath. Last one, bridge or upward facing bow. Scoop tailbone, lift hips up, five full breaths. Keep your toes pointing forward, don't let them turn out. Chest towards the space behind you, knees towards the space in front of you. Breathe, three, two, One, bring yourself down, hug your knees on in. Happy baby pose, grab feet, ankles behind the knees. Feel free to rock, straighten one leg at a time. Massage your low back. Then take your legs straight up, waterfall pose, or lift hips up, hands support the low back, shoulder stand. Gaze stays up at your feet. Plow pose. and ear pressure pose. Slowly start to lower yourself down. Fingertips underneath the tops of your butt. So I just really like the fingertips, like the fingernails really, under kind of like your waistband almost. So not, not like you're trapping your hands necessarily. Push your forearms down, puff up your chest and drop your head back. Fish pose, Matsyasana. Take a breath in, lion's breath out. Tuck your chin, lower yourself down, hug your knees into your chest. Rock side to side, and if there's any final pose or stretch you would like to take here, now's a wonderful time. So if you want a supine twist, a seated forward fold, anything like that, take your time. But when you feel ready, you'll extend your legs and flop your toes out. Give yourself permission to take up space and to rest. Relax the muscles in your body and relax the muscles in your mind. They're always working, planning, maybe thinking over things you've said or done most of the time living in a past moment or a future moment. If you're anything like me, mind is always off on the next thing, thinking about what's coming next, always off in the future. It can give you a lot of anxiety, feel like you need to plan everything out. 
A lot of people also live the present in the past. So thinking about what they could have done differently or reliving past moments. But if we waste all of the present trying to ruminate on or plan other moments, we're wasting what is really the only portal to peace. So you can only find peace in the present. So enjoy these final few moments just being right exactly where you are. Not scanning over the practice you've done or thinking about the rest of the day, just being right here. Shavasana. If you have time to stay, I would highly suggest doing that. If and when you're ready, start to bring some gentle movements back to your body, like fingers, toes. Notice what you can experience without even opening your eyes, what things you often overlook, you know, the feeling of your clothes, the mat, temperature, all these little details we get kind of bored of because we're thinking about something else the mind is wondering. So just take a moment to appreciate all those things that get overlooked. Hug your knees in when you're ready and roll to your right or left side. And take your time coming up to a seated position to close out your practice. There's no rush. Sitting up tall. Shoulders relaxed. So just like you practice poses, we practice balancing, we practice twisting. Not in this class, but sometimes we practice arm balancing, lots of different things. Just being present is another one of those practices. It's just not always easy. Each day is a little bit different. So just like you're patient with yourself and other things that you're practicing, yoga, language, learning an instrument, try to be patient with yourself as well when you're learning how to be present. Some days it's just easier than others and it's not always linear. So we just do our best and that's what we spend time on the mat focusing on, being present so that hopefully when you step off of your mat, you feel it's a little bit easier and more natural to live in the moment as well. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take a deep, full breath in. Exhale. Om Shanti, Om Peace, Namaste. Thank you for choosing to practice with me. I hope you enjoyed this class. I sure had fun filming it and doing it with you guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you did like it. Share it with your family and friends. Let me know what you'd like to see more of on my uh, channel. I do read and respond to, I try to respond to every single comment. So um, let me know. And if you practice with me, you can tag me on Instagram as well. My Instagram is just Emma Pigeon Yoga. See you guys next week. Have a wonderful rest of your day.